John Gartner here and welcome to my Sake video education series. Today I want to talk about koji, what it is, what it's not, what its main role is, what it contributes, and why such a huge fuss is made about it. Ichi koji ni moto sanzu kuri. It's a very, very old expression in the sake brewing world. Translated into English, it becomes first in importance is the koji, next in importance is the yeast starter, and once those two are properly taken care of, one can then make the main fermenting mash. While it's not like brewers walk around all day muttering this, it is a guiding principle in sake brewing because nothing exerts more leverage on the nature of the final sake than the koji and the way it was made. If you were to ask a sake brewery what the most important step of the process is, they would say every single step is the most important process. Because if you screw one thing up, everything else on down the line is equally screwed up. For example, if you don't mill the rice properly, then you won't be able to steam it properly and you won't be able to make proper koji or the rice won't dissolve properly in the fermenting mash. So every single step of the process is the most important step when it's being done. However, if you press a brewer and nail them down for an answer, without exception, they'll tell you that the most important step of the sake brewing process is the koji making. Nothing exerts more leverage on the nature of the final sake than the koji and the way that it was made. The way the koji is made will give you a sweet sake or a dry sake. The way the koji is made will give you a thin sake or a rich sake. And the way the koji is made will give you either a fruity sake or a stinky sake. That's how much importance and leverage koji making carries. Taking a step back, what is koji? Koji is steamed rice onto and into which a mold has been very precisely and very carefully propagated. So koji is moldy rice, as unappetizing as that sounds. And actually, koji can be barley-based too. But for sake making, koji is always rice-based koji, which is more specifically referred to as kome koji. Also, sake is not the only thing that is made using koji in Japan. Many things in traditional Japanese cuisine and traditional Japanese alcoholic beverages are made using koji. For example, miso, that staple of traditional Japanese cuisine, is made using koji. In a huge generalization, the western half of Japan uses predominantly barley-based koji to make their miso, and the eastern half of Japan uses predominantly rice-based koji to make their miso. But again, that's a generalization. But the point is that miso, a quintessential building block of washoku, is made using koji, be it rice-based or barley-based. So is shoyu, which is commonly known as soy sauce. And koji is used in many other pickling agents and other things throughout Japanese cuisine. Beyond cuisine, there's alcoholic beverages. Shochu, the distilled beverage that is indigenous to Japan, as well as awamori, the distilled beverage that's indigenous to Okinawa, are both made using koji. So koji is actually quite common in Japan. It is not by any means limited to sake production. Importantly, koji is not a mold. Koji is not a mold. Very commonly we hear koji is a mold, but it isn't. Koji is rice or barley, but for sake it's rice, onto and into which the mold, Aspergillus orizae, known in Japanese as kojikin, has been carefully propagated. I admit that I'm a bit of a stickler about this point, but koji itself includes the craftsmanship, the skill, the intention, the experience, and the will and the intuition of the brewing staff. Interestingly, the strain of mold is indeed important, but it's not nearly as important as the methods, skill, and intention that the brewer used to create the koji. So remember, koji is not a mold. Koji is rice onto which the mold has been already propagated. What is the role of koji? Its main role is to create enzymes that will later be used to chop the starch in the rice into sugar so that the yeast can convert that sugar to alcohol and carbon dioxide. However, Koji also provides amino acids that will lead to richness and umami, as well as many other nutrients that help the yeast ferment. So koji is really the heart of the sake brewing process and contributes many things, most importantly enzymes, that will convert the starch in the rice into sugar so that the yeast can ferment that. Note that koji is not necessary when making wine or beer. When wine is made, there's already sugar in the grape juice and that's all the yeast needs to give us carbon dioxide and alcohol. In beer, we start with barley, and that barley is malted. And the malting process brings out enzymes, and those enzymes will do the starch to sugar conversion that we need. So neither beer nor wine need to use koji. Sake, however, is made using rice, which has starch in it, but the rice has been milled, so the husks are gone. 
and therefore we can't malt the rice the same way that we would malt the barley. Therefore, we need to get the enzymes to chop the starch into sugar from another source. And that's the role, the main role, that koji fulfills in the sake brewing process. There are thousands and thousands of strains of koji mold in the world, and they're used in sake, shoyu, shochu, miso, and more. But the type that's used for sake is known as kikoji, which means yellow koji. And that simply refers to the fact that when completed, koji used for sake brewing has a slight amber tint to it compared to other koji, which has a darker tint or sometimes a whiter tint. So yellow koji or kikoji is the family of strains of koji mold that is used to make sake. Where does the koji mold actually come from? It's in the air. It's all around us. However, it's much more common in Asia because of the higher humidity. Also, the strains of koji mold that are used to make koji for sake brewing are strains of koji that are fond of rice or grow very naturally and very easily on rice. So, historically, after farmers would harvest rice in Japan and hang the stalks upside down to dry, uh, koji mold would naturally grow upon these things, and that's how koji was originally made. However, that's not where sake breweries get their koji mold these days. They buy their mold directly from one of about six companies that specialize in making koji mold for sake breweries, shochu distilleries, miso producers, and other companies that use koji. So while it is theoretically possible to get koji mold from the natural environment, brewers get very pure strains of koji mold from one of about half a dozen producers in Japan. The form in which sake breweries purchase koji mold from one of the six producers is a greenish powder that's been propagated kind of like suspended animation uh, on the outside of brown rice or genmai. That gives the koji mold just enough nutrients to stay alive or to stay active, but it doesn't give it enough to actually continue to grow from that point in time. Brewers will then take these brown rice grains with the koji mold grown upon it, put them into a silk bag or a screen bottomed can and shake the bag or can after which the spores will drift down on top of the steamed rice. The rice will then be mixed up very thoroughly to be sure that the spores are evenly distributed throughout the batch. This will take place in a special room inside the sake brewery, usually made with wooden walls and designed to maintain temperature and humidity. For the first 24 hours or so, it is bundled up and the warm, moist environment lets the mold get a good start growing. Then it's divided into smaller boxes or trays for the second 24 hours to let the mold grow in very, very specific ways, emphasizing very specific things like the development of particular enzymes in particular quantities. So across the typically 48 hours it takes to make koji, the brewing staff are in and out of the koji making room constantly, mixing up the trays and boxes and making adjustments to keep the temperature and moisture uniform throughout the batch in progress and to make sure that things are proceeding just the way the brewer wants them to for that particular step in that particular batch. And yes, it can be different every single time. In fact, every single brewery will make koji a little bit differently. And, to quote a line, what is essential is invisible to the eye. It's the little things that make the biggest differences in the world in koji making. As mentioned earlier, there's thousands of strains available, and brewers can shop for various strains with various enzymatic content in them, but more important than the actual strain of mold is the skill and the intention with which a brewer coaxes the mold to propagate. Koji is actually used four times in the sake brewing process. It's used once when making the yeast starter, and that, by the way, will be the strongest koji, enzymatically speaking, and then koji is added to each one of the three additions that come after that. So in total, koji will be made four separate times for every single batch of sake. And while koji making typically takes 48 hours, it can be as short as 40 or even as long as 70. It's just a matter of what the brewer wants to accomplish and how the brewer feels that things need to proceed to achieve that. For any given batch of sake, in the end, about 20 to 25% of all the rice that goes into that tank of sake will have first been turned into koji. So about 20 to 25% of any batch of sake is comprised of koji. The higher the ratio of koji, the richer the sake will be. Because the higher the ratio of koji, the more amino acids you'll have in your sake and the more umami you will have in your sake. 
This translates into richness, or perhaps volume or weight, in the final flavor profile. Also, koji can be made by machine. There's tons of machines out there, large ones that are fully automatic and small ones that do nothing but measure and control temperature and humidity. There's many, many machines to aid in making koji. And most of them are actually great machines that save lots of labor but do not sacrifice quality. Having said that, almost without exception, the koji for the best sake in any brewery, no matter big or how small, is almost always made by hand. Being the heart of the sake brewing process as it is, it's the one place where brewers rarely cut corners. But again, I do want to emphasize that wonderful koji can be made by machine. So don't diss a sake if you hear that the koji was made by machine, or think less of a brewer if you see a koji making machine in the brewery. There's wonderful machines out there, and especially after any given brewer learns to work well with the machinery in his or her brewery, they can make great, great koji with it. Having said that, almost every brewery will make the koji for their absolute best sake by hand. Earlier we talked about how koji is used in many things in Japanese cuisine. And in fact, anyone can buy koji at the grocery store. Just go to the local grocery store in Japan and you can buy it, take it home, make your own miso at home, or whatever you want to do with it. So it's readily available. However, koji bought in a typical grocery store or somewhere like that will be significantly different than how it was produced from the koji that's actually used in sake brewing. Koji making used to be a viable business. There were families whose family business was making koji and selling that to the local townsfolk who would buy that and make their miso and things at home. In fact, there's a neighborhood in Tokyo called Kojimachi where long ago many koji making families lived. Back to the sake brewing aspect of things, the special koji making room is known as a koji mudo. Mudo is just another word for room. And as mentioned earlier, typically koji mudo are made of wood and more specifically they're typically made of a wood called sugi which is translated into English as cryptomeria, but it smells a lot like cedar to me. The wood tends to breathe and give off moisture when the koji needs it and absorb excess humidity when the koji is trying to blow it off. However, wooden walls are not the only way to go. There are modern koji muro made with stainless steel walls as well. It's just a matter of preference on the part of the brewer. Bear in mind, too, that the way the koji is made has to be balanced and aligned with many other things that are taking place. If the enzymatic action is too strong, there'll be too much sugar and the yeast won't be able to process that. If the enzymatic action is too weak, there won't be enough sugar and the yeast will tend to starve. You have to have a balance with the mineral content of the water, the choice of yeast, the fermentation temperature, and a whole lot more to make sure that koji, as it is, is perfect for the brewery and the batch of sake at hand. So it's going to be different every single time. In truth, this basic introduction to koji is just scratching the surface. Books upon books have been written on koji making. It's the heart of the sake brewing process. And as they say, ichi koji ni moto sanzukuri. First in importance is the koji, and everything else will flow naturally after that. So just remember, koji is not a mold. It's steamed rice with the mold already propagated upon it. It contributes mainly enzymes, but a whole host of other things that make sake taste and smell just the way it does. And finally, remember that nothing exerts more leverage over the nature of the final sake than the way the koji was made. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on koji. If you're interested in more things about sake, please feel free to subscribe. And remember, any sake education activity always goes a little bit better with a glass of sake at hand. Kampai. Thank you.